Hi everyone, it's Barry from Jerusalem. It's uh, after the Sabbath, so Shavuot Tov, which means have a good week, everyone. We basically finished the book of uh, Shemot, which was the book of names, which counted people who who uh, left Egypt. And the very last books had to deal with the tabernacle. The tabernacle was the place in which God's presence would be with the Jewish people when they came into the land. And it gives a whole description on how to how to keep the laws regarding the tabernacle. The tabernacle went with them through the desert for 40 years in the desert before they came into the land of Israel. And it was surrounded by the 12 tribes. And each place had its had its purpose and job to uh, ensure the security of the Mishkan, which is the, the Holy Ark of the Covenant. However, this security was really Hashem bringing security to them. In other words, they were guarding it and Hashem was guarding them. That's the kind of uh, reciprocal relationship the Jewish people have with Hashem. That as long as they do the mitzvot and they learn the Torah, then we have a tradition. When there's no Torah and no mitzvot and no guard against the Torah, then we lose a tradition and we lose uh, the values of the Torah. And uh, God, for God's sake, you know, the Jewish people would be destroyed. And there are two ways in the last... 3,000 years, the Jews have managed to survive against all odds, against all the enemies. But there's a symbiotic relationship where the Jewish people are doing well and have harmony and unity. Then there is blessing. When the Jewish people are not, then they are exiled. So this book is a very central to what the Jews are supposed to do in order to be uni unified. Now it's fascinating because it goes into great detail all the aspects of the tabernacle and the beams and the, the length and they're specific and there are three there are basic elements that describe the glorious uh, attributes of the beauty that it was housing what they believed would be a, a benefit for the Jewish people in times of war in times of trouble it was like God chose himself to dwell with the Jewish people because he didn't want to leave us now the Mishkan was was created as a result of the incident of the golden calf right after that incident because of course the first commandment is not to have any other gods and here what's going on here Moses comes down the mountain his brother Aaron pacifies the group makes this little golden calf it's against what the, they just received from the Torah so this was the idea that, okay, you have difficulty with following the directions and understanding what my will for you is. In other words, Hashem is speaking. So I'm going to march with you. I'm going to go with you in the desert 40 years. That's going to be a cleansing for you. And then you'll be prepared come into the land of Israel and do as I ask you to do. So you understand the Jewish people have to keep the tradition. If they don't keep the tradition, they're finished. That's their relationship with God. So all the other nations of the world are trying to destroy the Jewish people. But what they don't understand is we have to deliver. If we don't do what Hashem wants us to do, then we're not going to exist. And when it was exiled, Hashem said, 
Well, listen, you, you weren't keeping the laws properly. And what, what's going to happen is I'm going to destroy the, the temple that you made for me. Because I'm, I'm dedicated to you. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they all three were dedicated to me without so many questions. But you have a lot of questions. Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu had a lot of questions. Not like Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Because these, they just did whatever Hashem told them to do. But the, the Jewish people are called the stiff-necked people. There's a reason for it. They're stubborn a little bit. But that's the that's the, the the characteristics that we Jews really have to kind of overcome and try to get on board with 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 learning what it means to be a servant of God and also what it means to improve our character traits because that's what the Torah is all about. It's all about finding your better self self. It's all about building on what's lacking. It's all about having patience to work on yourself and actually move forward towards greater unity. So in the parsha it's called the Kahal, there was a community. And this this it's an interesting concept because each one of us is an individual. There's an individual and there's a community. So the community is the the formation of all the individuals. And we can see it clearly in the desert where the center of focus was the Mishkan, was the Ark of the Holy Covenant. And everything surrounded around it in one community. That's the whole concept. But the concept today is, you know, there's a lot of people who have other religions and other gods and have no gods. That's, that's their choice. But God says to the Jewish people, your choice is to follow my commandments. If you don't follow my commandments, X, Y, and Z is going to happen. So it's, it's, like a no, it's like a no one situation. We have to find within ourselves the benefit and learn from the chachma of the wisdom of the Jewish rabbis and the Jewish past who ever overcame many difficulties like Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. So this is, this, is, this is what it's about. So Hashem says, there's a direct connection between me and you. Not only the Jewish people, but the whole world. We call the 70 nations. There were 70 people that left the land of Canaan to come into Mitzrayim and these also reflect somehow the 70 nations. But the idea is to be separate as a holy nation. And it says in the very first uh, paragraph of, the, of this week's Torah, in Vikahel, you should have six days of work and on the seventh day you rested because Hashem rested. And that's really center to, to what the belief system is it's not it's not a thing like do your own thing or I don't want to do it we're commanded to do it and we say if you don't want to keep it you'll keep it but you know you might have problems you might not have problems but the bottom line is that's that's the Jewish responsibility so in the modern era we have a lot of differences of opinion we have the opinion of a very narcissistic type of culture that stems from the Greek Roman influence because that's what they were about their gods and their physicality and they try to break us spiritually but this Mishkan the concept of the Mishkan is that spiritual connection that's directly every aspect of the Mishkan parallels the rabbis tell us a temple already pre-built in heaven this is a deeper concept but the bottom line is, you follow the formula, you go, you learn, you do the good things, you do the halacha. Halacha is from the word leleche, to walk. So you walk in the oral tradition, which is the Talmud, 
which became, which was supposed to be at Sinai, the way in which the Jews would learn this message from God that he, Moses received at Mount Sinai. But when the Jews, when the temples were destroyed, they no longer uh, had this and they were, they were afraid that they were going to lose what they already knew. What they knew being in the diaspora, being outside the land of Israel. But the unique thing here is God said rather than destroy the Jewish people after the golden calf, and this is why the tabernacle came to fruition, so Hashem could be, His presence could be. And when there was 40 days and 40 nights, uh, Moshe was up on the mountain, and it was 40 years he was getting the Torah, the Ten Commandments. It was 40 years, the same n number, which reflects in the, in the letter Mem. You know, Mem is 40. It's usually a transitional period of time. It's also a cleansing period of time, like in the time of the flood. You know, we have a brain, and we have Mem. Mem is like membrane, but but it, it reflects the time, the time differences in our life. If we're lucky, we get to live to this expression 120. Moses lived to 120. That's four mems. Three, three mems. Three times 40 is 100. And every stage of his life, in the second stage of his life, he was 80, and he was asked to go f uh, free the Jews growing up in a, in a, in a, in a climate of, uh, of, of, of an Egypt, Egyptian because she, the, 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 the daughter of the Paro saved him. So he had a mission to accomplish at age 80. We think we're retiring at age 80. No, we're not retiring. You know, I'm not retiring. You know, I'm trying. I'm not 80 either. But, <laughs> but the thing is, you know, I'm trying to put everything that I've learned, given my schooling and my background and my education, to try to have the Jews see something what's happening in the world. Because all these things that's happening in the world today were prophecies, you know. And I, you, you had seen the, the previous video of the Purim story. That's that's the same things going on today. With the, this is the generation of Amalek, and they vowed the, dis the destruction of Israel, just like they did more than twenty five hundred years ago. It's the same story. So, if you're in tune to the mem, if you're in tune to this concept that time and space, according to the accounting of what Hashem wants for the Jewish people, and that the Jewish people will be redeemed, and the other nations as well. Because all these events that are happening, taking not only the Jewish people away from Hashem, but the other nations who are being disrespectful, <coughs> and looking at other gods, you know, even in the time of the flood, I or mean, in the time of when they built the Tower of Babal, they were arrogant. So the Torah is really saying, so what did God do? He he gave everybody languages that different languages. So when they were building, they they asked for a hammer and they got a you know they got, they got hammered over the head. You know, <laughs> they did different things but nobody understood anyone and that's why we have languages oh you think you you think you're smarter than me you think you could actually come to the heavens and attack me you know I'll show you I'll show you something so there we have it we have all these languages we have all these things but we still have to find unity this is what this Pasha is about unity coming together so it's all coming together the players way back thousands of years are living today and that's why you see all this social us, uh, unrest all over the world. Nobody knows when it's going to happen, whatever's going to happen. But people have to, have to have faith and they have to still stand strong in that faith and wait to see what's happening and have faith in, happen, in that happening. So with this chapter ending... The Jews were, at, were ending the second book called Shemot, and and next week we're starting 
the third book of uh, Vayikra, which is the uh, has to do with the uh, the um, sacrifices. This is what we teach the little kids about the sacrifices, because as long as Hashem is in our midst, and we saw Hashem when the temple was alive before it was destroyed and the, by the Babylonians and the Greeks and the Romans. This is the final exile, Rome. This exile is the longest from Rome, more than 2,000 years, and it's coming to fruition right now. So we have to be patient and faithful that Hashem is with us in everything we do. So remember the tabernacle. Remember his place with the Jewish people in the desert. Whenever the cloud would rise, the whole camp of 600,000 that were counted would rise. And whenever it set, it would set. So it would rise. We were connected with Hashem. And then when we came into Israel, we took this Mishkan, we took this holy ark, and we put it on the Temple Mount in Har Maria, in the exact location of the, the mosque, the golden dome that is there today. So you have to understand the history and the conflicts, and you have to have faith in God that those who are righteous will be remembered in the final days, and those who are not righteous they don't have any excuse because they've been warned. So, I wish you all a good week. We're coming into a new month, the month of our liberation, the month of, of uh, Nisan, which is the Passover. And for other religions, it's different holidays. But my focus is on the Jewish people, and I'm trying to get all peoples to see the Jews a little differently. They have no choice to live up to that expectation. Otherwise, they may suffer some very difficult consequences. That's just the way we are. I'm here in the middle of Jerusalem. I come from a place in Massachusetts. I'm here. There are many people like me. I'm not the first Jew here. <laughs> many Jews. Uh, but not as many as you think. And... Uh, we're trying to basically save our community and save save others. Saving the, we're saving the world, basically. Because the God made the Torah, the people, and the land as one unity, one unifying element. Any, any piece of this triangle that's not symmetric, that doesn't follow, We're not following the tradition properly. So we have to try to find in this madness a sense of unity. Unity for the Jewish people as a nation of different people, different opinions in different countries. And also for the world who sees us and not always a good light. My purpose of these videos of a book I wrote called Dancing. Well, now I, I change it to Dodging with the Devil. It has to do with overcoming our fears, overcoming our doubts. As I mentioned in a previous thing, a Malek, who was the, who, who the Torah says, attacks a Jew in every generation. So here we go. We're fighting, a, we have to fight a Malek just because the Torah says that. I'm, I'm telling the nations, prove the Torah wrong. Prove that you can turn your, your, yourself around. Prove that you can change your attitudes. What are you afraid of? Tiny little Israel. Nobody can knock it off the, the face of the earth. 100 million enemies. Nobody. You know? World leader in so many different things, helping so many different countries. But oh, the all the nations of the world are screaming. This Israel, man, look at them. It doesn't make any sense. We're going to knock this guy out once and for all, and then we'll have a good world. Just the opposite. Because we exist, you exist. And you have to understand that. And 
that's my message to you today. Try to see us in a different light. Have a good week. Barry from Jerusalem.